<laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, let's go. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Episode 53. Yes, ma'am. 53. Yes. Um, ma'am. We're talking about <laughs> the title of your note, how to cope with overwhelm. <laughs> we're talking about overwhelm today. <laughs> yes. Yep. We're talking about overwhelm. So we're talking about how to cope with being overwhelmed. Who here has been overwhelmed before? <laughs> By a show of hands. Raise your hand. Me. Who has been so overwhelmed in the last month? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'll raise all my limbs. <laughs> Who has been so overwhelmed <laughs> that they just freeze? Yes. And who has been so overwhelmed that they spiral? Yes. Show of hands. Where do you want to go with this? In my head, I'm thinking we could talk about maybe what overwhelms us and sure. like how we kind of come through it. Are you going to make fun of me and say, does your list <laughs> end or does anything not overwhelm you? Like you do with the anxiety when you fucking asshole. I know. <laughs> I'm a dick sometimes. <laughs> I can be really rude. But it's out it's of rude. love. I know. It wasn't rude at all. And now that I'm that overwhelm me. Like now that I'm trying to think about it, I'm like, what fucking overwhelms me? And I can't think of anything, but I know things overwhelm me, yes. right? Yes. You want to know what the biggest thing that overwhelms me? If I have a booked solid day mm-hmm. and clients are emailing me or mm-hmm. people are texting me and I don't have time to check my phone in between, man my fucking anxiety is through the roof. It's the sense of urgency where it's like, I feel like I have to respond and I don't have the time. And then it, yes. it, for me, it can lead to feelings of like inadequacy. Like I'm not doing enough when in reality I'm doing too much and I, I can't keep up. <laughs> I'm not resting yes. my body. Yes. I'm, I'm full tilt. Mm-hmm. Send it. I absolutely completely understand that. That, and then when I, sometimes I get so frustrated in those moments, I take my watch off and I rarely, rarely ever take my Apple watch off. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm like fucking buzzing and dinging. And, mm-hmm. and sometimes I put on do not disturb or my work mode where like people aren't supposed to be able to contact me and shit's just still going off. I'm like, does the work mode allow all <laughs> messages to come through? What is the point of or, having that option? <laughs> please stop. Um, but what I've noticed, like, so, so I think different things overwhelm you, right? Like, right. Yes. For me being ADHD, what, what, how I get overwhelmed is like sounds and stimulations. Sure. Like, like if my sensory clothes, overwhelm. Yes. Oh man. So like my brain doesn't overwhelm me too much, but like if I have a full day and then I've got all these bags that I got to pack up and I'm coming home and I pick up self and she's talking about something. And then somebody's emailing me or calling me and I'm trying to get out and trying to get in the house. And then, and then I see dishes and then like those things, like just, I'm like, Whoa! all of the above yeah. overwhelms. Yeah. Well. And then, and then I'm like, self. Like this morning, I can't, I literally this morning, I was, I was sending an email to somebody and they were talking about, um, wanting to switch times and I had somebody else emailing me about a time, but here's the thing. If you don't email me back when I email you within that day, It'll those times taken. are gone. So, yeah. and I don't hold times for people because if I don't hear from you in three days, that's three chances that I had a chance yeah. to see somebody else. So I, time is gone. So I'm like doing that. And she is upset because she doesn't know what shoes to wear. And I already gave her my opinion on what shoes to wear. So then she's just fucks in with her door handle. Like, no, bing, that's like bug bing, flicking the bing. fucking door stopper. I'm like, can you stop it? I, and I was like, I'm, I'm losing it. I'm going to fucking lose it. I'm we're, we're running out of time. Right. Yes. I'm going to fucking lose it. So I went to her and I was like, so I'm trying my best to not flip out on you this morning. Okay. I let you know and like went through the whole spiel and everything. And she was like, can I say something without you freaking out? And I was like, yes, you have the opportunity to speak now. And she was like, I don't know what shoe. And I was like, oh, oh no. Mm-hmm. I gave you my opinion. If you don't like my opinion, that's okay. Mm-hmm. But I gave you my opinion mm-hmm. and it doesn't change. <laughs> 
still the same as when you asked me five minutes ago. So literally it's, I'm still going to say the same thing. And it, I think what I struggle with is because it starts stacking like dominoes, mm-hmm. I have to keep reminding myself to be mindful in that moment to clear that cachet, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's like in dialectical behavioral therapy, if you're looking at a situation that you want to break down because you're like, I don't know how I got from here to here. Mm-hmm. No idea how I went zero to 60. It's called a behavior chain analysis. If you're looking at a BCA, these things that I'm talking about are vulnerabilities. They're things that stack up and chomp away at this fuse. If you think about like a cartoon bomb, chomp away at that fuse that makes your, your emotional resiliency or distress tolerance next to nothing. Mm -hmm. So then it's just this quick impulsive reaction of blowing up on somebody because you've been overwhelmed the entire time. You haven't been checking that you haven't been calling attention to that because when you call attention to it, you build the fuse back up a little bit. Sure. Right. But if you're not calling attention to that, that's just, just chomping away. And then all of a sudden you're zero to 60. I know that you know this, I can get overwhelmed by my own thoughts sometimes about a situation, right? If I feel lately in the past few weeks, I have felt like I've been pulled in a million different directions, literally all at once. And again, as somebody who was a perfectionist, literally her whole life, it leads to feelings of inadequacy. Again, like I'm not doing enough. I need to be able to be on top of things. I need to be able to respond to messages. I need like all of these things. I should, 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 should. Yep. Yep. Cognitive errors. Yes. And so what I found myself doing in those situations is like old me would just become really angry and irritable, but still do the things Mm -hmm. right. Still do all the things, even Mm -hmm. if I felt like I didn't have the energy to do them. Now I'm taking a step back to being like, I actually can't do that right now. I don't have the space for it. And I don't feel bad about that. No, I'm not going to feel bad about setting boundary. Exactly. Because I have to take care of me. Like if you, if people have expectations of me, that I agree to fulfill. That's one thing. But if you have expectations of me that I do not agree to, I don't have to give my energy to that. And I won't anymore because that's not healthy for me. Right. Yes. There are people like bug has expectations, whether he's makes them a parent or not, but like I'm his mom. So there are things that I have to do regardless. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying really hard to model, you know, taking breaks or identifying I'm feeling really overwhelmed right now. And I'm sorry that I'm frustrated or I'm sorry that, you know, maybe my attitude wasn't the greatest or taking time away, like putting my phone on do not disturb is like a blessing. Um, and I find that if I'm filling my cup up with something that I'm super into like reading a book or like last weekend bug and I played video games a lot, which was awesome. It was just nice to just like be a kid again. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily feeling like I had to respond. I think what fucks me up sometimes is being a business owner who's on social media, who uses her social media to be a business owner. Yeah. You have this expectation of yourself that like you have to be on all the time. Yeah. I don't, I don't no. have to. And if people don't no. like that and they want to unfollow me because I'm not on all the time, then that's your prerogative. Yeah, exactly. I can't constantly give and give and give and give and give. I, I don't have it in me because I give in my personal life all day, every day. Mm-hmm. to my clients and to my family. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think one thing to be mindful of, again, like we talk about all the time is just how you're talking to yourself about it. If I were to continue to spiral and say, I'm so overwhelmed, I can't handle my life. I'm going to continue to feel that way. It's not exactly. going to go away as opposed to, okay, let me take a step back and look at what's in my control right now. What mm-hmm. do I have control over? What can I do to decrease some of this overwhelm? I can take a break from social media. I can put my phone on, do not disturb. I can let people know I'm going to not be responding for the next three days, right? Like there are things in my control that I can do to decrease the feeling of overwhelm. I had a thought thought and it's fucking gone. Oh, got it. Ooh, back to business. And (laughs) And I kind of feel like I'm like a robot when I just power down and then I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) anyways, let me spit it out before it fucking flies away again. (laughs) Jesus. So what I think is so important, it's important in dialectical. Okay. (laughs) Why Why did I sound like that? Yeah, it's important. It is. It is almost 10 a.m. I am not. I've not been drinking. Like, sorry, my fucking words. Am I stroking out right now? Like, what's happening? <laughs> so, DBT talks about it. 
basically every other mode of therapy talks about it. The GOAT Brene Brown talks about it. In order to recognize in the first place that you're being overwhelmed before you get to the point where you're like, I'm fucking overwhelmed. You have to start to pay attention to your body to notice the symbol, the symbols, signals, symbols, whatever. Yep, you know. Yeah, you know, symbiosis. I don't know. <laughs> Osmosis. <laughs> Photosynthesis. The fuck. You have to. I have too much coffee today. It's gonna. I'm gonna go downhill quickly. <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna look, look up and you're gonna be like this. <laughs> I gotta get it together. <laughs> I didn't even have any sugar this morning, and I feel like I'm like. Ugh. I do feel like this is sugar, Mari, right now. <laughs> it is. Focus, Mari. Okay. You have to pay attention to your body. Your body is going to give off the signals first before the brain, mm -hmm. because the brain is responding to the physical signals that are coming to your brain. Yep. So that like the brain is then cultivating the thoughts of like, wow, my heart's racing fast. Mm, I'm anxious or my whatever is whatever. Like I'm that <laughs> your brain is assigning the thought to what is happening. And as easily as you assign that thought, you do have the ability to change the thought. Yes. Just because your brain assigned the thought doesn't mean that you have to go into it. You can, you can, literally like I like to think visually again you can literally just watch that shit go by and be like oh wow that's crazy you don't have to be like okay huh, now I'm anxious like you don't have mm -hmm. to do that so first and foremost get in your body mm -hmm. and some of the steps that we started to write down which is where what I'm leading into of like the not we stuff wrote them down let's be 100 on this I didn't break this shit down <laughs> It's weird. Like I'll write a bunch of shit down in my life, but like stuff like this, I'm like, ah, I don't need to. So first and foremost, first step in being able to start to learn how to cope with being overwhelmed or overwhelming thoughts or feelings is take a deep breath and step away. Mm -hmm. You have to take yourself out of this situation and get back into your body. Mm -hmm. If you are in your head, you need to get out of your head and into your body. And that's what I mean about those physical symptoms. Mm -hmm. If you can then recognize like, okay, my heart is racing or okay, you know, um, I feel jittery. If you can start to ground yourself then your mind starts to slow down because again, physically, your body is sending signals to your brain that's saying like, hey, whoa, what are we doing? Let's calm down a little bit. Okay, let's breathe. Let's do whatever. Does that make sense? Yeah, and that's what I teach people with anxiety too, is if you feel like you're gonna panic or like you're gonna quote unquote freak out, we need to calm down the physiological aspects of your body in order yes. for your brain to follow. Your brain is on hyperspeed, right? Let's calm down the nervous system first. And that's where mm -hmm. deep breathing comes into play because you're gonna slow everything down. Your heart rate's gonna slow down, your blood pressure's gonna calm down, like all of the things. So then you can say to yourself, okay, I'm in my body, I can feel what's going on. Now let's challenge these thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Second step is to create a no list. Protecting your energy and space helps give you that sense of control that you're, you feel like you're missing when you're feeling overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. It helps give you control over your schedule. Replace activities that you don't want to do with something that you'll enjoy. I, I oftentimes hear clients ask, like, not ask, but say, like, well, I didn't really want to do it, but I agreed to it. Why? Yeah. What cognitive error are you operating out of? Well, I feel like I should. I feel mm -hmm. like shoulds, fortune telling, labeling, blaming. Mind reading. Uh, and, mm -hmm. I mean, literally, you could you could probably all of them, honestly, yeah. but you have to write that shit down in order to recognize what you are operating out of. Well, people are gonna think that I'm XYZ. Let them think that. Mm -hmm. You can't control what they think about you, anyways. Mm -hmm. And this this fallacy that you're creating in your head of like, well, I'm in control of how people perceive me. No, you're not. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. Yep. You could do everything perfectly. Well, and again, last Perfectly. weekend, mm -hmm. I could have been doing work stuff, right? I could have been preparing for X, Y, Z over the weekend and consume myself with work. Instead, I was like, I'm not going to do that though. I'm going to hang out with my kid or we're going to fucking play video games. Right. And like, yes. I needed to recharge my own energy in order to be present for the week ahead. Right. Yes. So my no list was, I'm not going to respond to work emails. I'm not going to be on social media. I'm not going to be like constantly doing, 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 doing all weekend. I'm just not. And I felt better. I, and the same, the, sometimes your no list isn't something that is going to be easy, right? right? Like my no list that I just 
made was that I needed to take TikTok off of my iPad now. Mm -hmm. So it was on my phone months ago. If you listen to our fucking podcast episodes, you'll figure out when I took it off and a little irritable in the beginning. And then eventually it just never missed it. Don't, don't think about it on my phone because it was taking away too much during my day that I could be getting done. Um, like when I'm at work and being effective during those breaks that I have, instead of wasting that time and then feeling like, oh God, now I got to hype myself up in three minutes to go back into another session. Well, this week I took it off the iPad and I was very irritable the first night, AKA yesterday night. Um, really? because yeah, it's like, it's like my come down. It's, it's like, decompression I, time. I would assume that it's like what people feel like when they smoke a cigarette. I'm not yeah. even kidding. Like not, not even joking. Like, cause it just like, I just blink out. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't think about a fucking thing. I don't think about anything, but that's the problem, right? Yes. I don't think about a fucking thing. You're and then it's midnight. And then I'm like, Oh my God, now I set myself up for failure. I'm not going to wake up when I wanted to. I'm not going to get the workout done that I wanted to. I'm not going to, I'm going to be zapped with energy. I'm going to blah, 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 blah. So it just trickled into all these other things. And I know myself, I'm a very zero to a hundred person. Mm-hmm. I do not have those regulation skills. And I have come to understand that about myself. And I'm not going to sit here and be like, I really need to work on that. No, that's just the type of person I am. If I want to fucking do it, I'm going all the way in. And yeah. if I don't want to do it, then I am a staunch no. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to turn that off when it comes to that. So I know that if I go on social media, because it is, it's deemed in my mind, this social media, TikTok, I can get off Instagram or Facebook. That shit does not, it is not rewarding to me. So I am not on that shit like that. The TikTok has this re- so rewarding to me that I don't know how to shut that off. And so that's on my no list. So this is, I understand that this is creating these overwhelming feelings for me because it's keeping me from my life and I'm sure. neglecting things that need to be done. So that's on my no list that, that had to be taken off. Did it suck? Yeah, absolutely. But here's the thing. It is what it is. I'll be a little upset the first night, which I was yesterday, but then move into finding other ways to cope, mm-hmm. other ways to decompress, other ways to yeah, I mean, those are really the only words because I was gonna be like numb out, but like I don't want, I don't want to numb out. That's why you I don't find other ways to be present. Right, right, right. Yeah, you while be present and not avoid. Yes, yes, yes. So, and that could look like listening to a book. Yes, and that's what, like I have these two on Libby that are gonna be up in two weeks or up in a week now, honestly. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? And that's mm-hmm. achieving my goals too. Not only is it doing something I want to really do because I want to read these books, but then also it's adding to a goal that I set for the year for myself. Yep. It's a double whammy. It's a BOGO. <laughs> it's a BOGO. It's a buy one, get one. Buy one, get one, feel good, dopamine release. What? Why am I not doing it? Whatever. Fair question. So the next part, be kind to yourself. Step three, be kind to yourself. So again, like I was just talking, I could sit here and shame myself of like, oh, I was on TikTok too long or, oh, I did this or, oh, like, oh, you know, you could be doing this. You should be doing that. Like what, what is, is that effective? What is that doing? What is that helping? You mm-hmm. sending yourself into a shame spiral. What are you getting out of that? Besides shame, more shame on top of whatever you've got going on. I had that with Instagram when I was not on or responding to people, or if I did open it, I would just kind of like a comment and not engage with them. And typically I engage with people. Right. Mm-hmm. And in my head for a fleeting moment, I was like, they're probably going to be upset. And then I was like, I don't have control over that. If somebody chooses to get upset because I'm setting a boundary, that's not my problem. And that's Mm -hmm. not me being rude. That's me taking care of me. Right. I can't be expected to be on 24 seven or to be responding to people or be able to like give all this energy when I don't, I don't have it. I don't have to give. Here's the thing. You can be expected. People can expect that, but they need to check their expectations. Once I set that boundary. Yep. I've said this, I don't know how many times, and I will say it until I'm blue in the face, every single podcast episode, you cannot help others unless you help yourself. Mm -hmm. Helping yourself and putting yourself first isn't selfish. Mm -hmm. It's not. You cannot help others or provide or be or put other hats on if you're not taking care of yourself first. Plain and simple. If you are in an airplane and they the little masks are coming down, they tell you to put yours on first because what the fuck do you look like suffocating to death trying to help other people? Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Well, and this is a prime example of how personalization is so inappropriate, right? Me not responding is not a reflection of how I feel on you. It is a reflection of what I'm going through in my life. So you choosing to personalize it and say, she must not like me that's on you, bro. How is that effective? Instead of saying, wow, she just doesn't seem to want to talk today. That's okay. Or wow, she's taking a break. Good for her. 
-hmm. right? Or she didn't respond and that's okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what the fuck? Step four, ask for help from a loved one. So your social support network is for you to lean on if you need to vent or talk things through. I, I, yes, they're there for you to vent and talk things through. Venting is where I, oh, that gets me because a lot of people are like, I'm just venting. No, you're bitching. Yes. You are bitching. You are complaining about something that isn't in your control. And no amount of complaining is going to get you to where you want to be or the situation to be what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. I understand voicing frustration for a moment, allowing yourself to feel it and moving the fuck through it. Mm -hmm. Do not fucking keep coming to me about the same thing that you were fucking upset about over and over and over again, because you choose to be inactive. You choose to be an inactive participant in your life. You fucking hear me when I say this. And I'm saying this with love and respect because I was that person. I would come to people and bitch about my sure. relationship. Bitch, that's you. That's your yeah. fault. And not even fault. Look, I don't like that. It's that's your, your choice. It's yeah. your choice. I chose that. I chose to stay there and to be fucking unhappy. I chose that. So me going and bitching to other people about it, what is that doing besides reiterating and compounding those negative thoughts over and over and over again? Like I said before, those negative thoughts, when you say them out loud, compound, compound seven times more than if you are to attempt to find neutrality in that thought. Or again, coming to vent or complain about something that literally has nothing to do with you. Nothing. What purpose is it serving for you to come to me and be all up in arms about something that is 1 million percent out of your control and has nothing to do with you? You're choosing to carry somebody's fucking luggage that does not belong to you. Put that shit down. What are you Thank doing? You. Thank you. Take a step back and be like, wait, does this have anything to do with me? Can I do anything about this? No. Then why the fuck am I giving an energy? Literally. And I can speak to that because I used to do that. I felt like I was the Same. problem solver for fucking everybody. And so I was constantly up in arms about the shit that was happening in my life that I literally had no control over. And mm -hmm. as somebody who's anxious, that was overwhelming for me because I felt like, but I need to have control over it. I need to fix it. I need to do, no, the fuck I didn't. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. No, no. So yes, ask for help, process through it, and then make a decision or move on. Mm -hmm. And if you need to know how to make a decision, check out episode 52, where we help you make the fucking decision. Yes. And then check out the episodes about cognitive errors when you start shooting yourself to death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Step five, write it out. Writing down when you feel overwhelmed or anxious or any of those things those negative emotions that we perceive when you start to write it down and even do just do like a free writing experience or a journal, it helps to have this plan to start to understand what am I making up? Mm -hmm. What is, what is a cognitive error? What is fact? And then it also allows you to express yourself freely without judging yourself because then we judge ourselves in our head. If I'm putting it on paper, I'm then able to see the differentiation between what is actually real and happening and what is it, what mm -hmm. is my fucking issue and what is it, mm -hmm. what I have the control over and what I don't. What are thoughts and feelings and what are facts, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And your thoughts of, well, I feel like this. Okay. But feelings are not facts. Mm -hmm. And you operating in that feeling over and over and over again, that is a choice. Yep. Which is a hard truth people don't want to hear, but it is what it is. It is a hard truth. It is. It absolutely is. And the second you stop fighting that hard truth, you can start to step into acceptance or empathy or any of these other positive emotions or neutral emotions mm -hmm. versus fighting it. If the situation is what it is, then you need to accept that. That's where radical acceptance comes into play. You have to understand no amount of you bitching, whining, perseverating, fearing, operating in these negative spirals is going to change the situation for what it is. Yep. So to recap, this, if you want to write these down yes. on how to cope with being overwhelmed, step number one, take a deep breath and step away, just as it sounds. Mm -hmm. Step number two, create a no list of what you are not willing to do and what is not helpful for you. Step three, be kind to yourself. Come to yourself with compassion and grace as opposed to shame and disdain or frustration. Step number four, ask for help from a loved one with the caveat of 
understand what the fuck is in your control and what you are going to do about it. Yes. And the last one, step number five is to write it out, make a list, do a narrative, do a free write, however the fuck it is that you want to write it out, but get that shit on paper. So you can come to realize what is actually happening in your head. Are, are any of them facts or are they feelings? And then differentiate between the two and then move forward. Make a list of things that you need to do. If it's, if it is something that you're not overwhelmed with, that creates a lot of emotions um, because it's multifaceted and it's more so of like, I need to do this today, this today, this today, this today, list them out, mm-hmm. make a list. And if you don't accomplish the list in that day, understand and reflect that that's okay. The yep. list is meant to serve as a guide, not something that I live and die by. Mm-hmm. So take this shit to heart, digest it. Let us know if you have any questions, concerns, comments at rewriting her story podcast at gmail.com. We are at rewriting her story podcast on Instagram. Steph is at spooky fit mom 13. I am at B E A underscore X O 11. All of those tags I said are very fast, but they're at the end of every episode. Every so episode. Please <laughs> slow it down if you need to, but literally every single episode. If you need us, we are here. Let us know what you want to hear, topics that are concerning to you. If there's something you want us to go further into, we are so open to it. So until next time, thank you. Bye. Bye.